There's no doubt for Jews all over the world, Israel is a major part of their Jewish identity, whether it's because Israel is constantly in the news, on television, in the newspaper. For Jews who have very little Jewish identity, Israel is still a major part. The problem is what we know about Israel often comes through the media. The media has certain agendas, and often certain misconceptions about Israel comes through the media. There are three major misconceptions about Israel that it's important as Jews that we're able to answer. The first major misconception is the misconception of occupation. Any good Palestinian spokesperson can use the word occupation as many times in a sentence as possible. It's important that we know what is the root of this accusation of occupation. Really, when people say occupation, they mean at the very basis the Jewish people do not have a connection to the land of Israel. They're saying a foreign imperialist power, a European occupational power has come into the land and take the land from the native inhabitants. In order to deal with this misconception of occupation, there's a few important facts that we have to know. First of all, we have to know the Jewish connection to the land of Israel. The Jewish connection is so deep and so long that to say that the Jews are a foreign imperialist power is completely a misnomer. The Jewish people first came to the land of Israel 3,800 years ago. Just to put that in perspective, if you look at America today, 250, 300 years old, that's considered old. If you find something in America, in Boston, that's 250 years old, that's considered to be ancient in America. 3,800 years ago, the Jewish people first came to the land of Israel. So number one, there's an ancient connection. Secondly, it's important to know that it's not only that Jews came so long ago and then left, but there's always been a continuous connection to the land of Israel. There's always been Jews living in the land of Israel. Even when 99% of Jews were exiled around the world, there was always Jews living in the land of Israel. Thirdly, even those 99% of Jews that were exiled, they always wanted to come back. We're not talking about the British going into India or the Dutch going into South Africa that all of a sudden one day they decided, hey, this will be nice for our country, it will make us some money. The Jewish people always had a connection to the land of Israel. Whether it was on Pesach when we say, Lashana Habab Yerushalayim, whether it was when Jews were praying three times a day when faced Jerusalem, when it was, whether it was at a wedding, at the, some of the most uh, happy times in a Jew's life, when in the highlight of the, the wedding ceremony, when a Jew breaks the glass, we break the glass in order to remember that the Jewish people want to come back to the land of Israel, that even at this height of happiness, things are not perfect for us because Jew, Jerusalem is not built, Israel is not built. So the first point to remember when we talk about occupation is that the Jewish people have as deep, if not the deepest, connection to the land of Israel possible. Secondly, it's important to remember that when Jews came back to the land of Israel in masses in the late 1800s and early 1900s, they did not take the land from anyone. They came to the land and purchased it, and secondly, they purchased land that was in general uninhabited. They went to places like the coastal plain along the Mediterranean Sea that was sand dunes. They went to places like the Upper Galil that was swamp. They went to places like the Negev Desert, which was desert and uninhabited. They did not steal the land from anyone. A third important point to know when you talk about occupation is that in 1967, when Israel fought the Six-Day War, they were attacked first. It was a defensive war. Going into the West Bank, going to the Gaza Strip were not moves that Israel decided to make in order to take over land, but they were attacked by the surrounding Arab countries and in a defensive war not only defended themselves, but decided in order to fully protect their country, they had to create a bigger buffer zone. But in addition, Israel has been willing to move forward for peace. Israel has been willing to negotiate with the other Arab countries in order to come to a negotiated settlement in order to give the, the, the Arab countries or the Palestinians living within these territories their own land. Not to give it back because Israel feels that this is their ancient homeland. But in order to have peace, Israel has been willing to negotiate and give the Palestinians their own state. The problem is that the Palestinians have not been willing to accept it. Even when Israel offered them at Camp David or through other agreements the ability to have their own state, the Palestinians have turned it down. Why? If the goal is for them to have their own state, why have they turned it down? Some people would say it's because their goal is not to have their own state, but really their goal is to take over Israel.